Chapter 22-28 Not long after, Guy, who had already lifted the effect of the Hashiman Tanku, slowly walked into the grove. Seeing Guy lifted the Hashiman Tanku, Kuroto also breathed a sigh of relief, but said coldly, under my perfect defense, any attack is ineffective. You should have experienced this. Guy gasped, and said, Kuroto, your Hyuga clan's Byakugan and gentle fists are indeed well deserved to be called one of the best bloodlines and combat techniques. I feel that my every move was under your attention, it felt that no matter what I did it couldn't escape your eyes. In the fourth gate state, both the attacks Guy initiated on Kuroto were blocked by him very easily, at least that's what Guy believed seeing the unaffected state of Kuroto. This fact led Guy to believe that he has no chance of winning this mock battle even if he continued to fight. Kuroto's face was still indifferent, of course, all your attacks have been seen through by me. Guy sat down on the ground, hey, I still lost. Humph, you should be proud of yourself to be able to force me to use Revolving Heaven, your secret technique is indeed commendable. After a pause, Kuroto said again, take a good rest today. See you at the mission center tomorrow morning. Guy was taken aback for a moment, and then said in surprise, you, you don't mind making a team with me for going on missions. Don't be late, because I don't like waiting. After Kuroto left a word, Guy no longer said much and Kuroto simply walked towards his house. At this moment, he was about to fall apart, and he couldn't stand any longer, if he didn't leave, he might have fallen unconscious because of all the pain he was feeling. The nervous guy seemed to have nothing to say, he was only cheering and bounced back home in excitement for tomorrow. Not long after Kuroto and Guy left one after another, a team of Umbu appeared in the woods where the two fought. After a brief survey of the scene, one of the Umbu said, there are no traces of using any ninjutsu, nor does it seem to use any jinjutsu. It is a pure taijutsu battle. The leading Umbu said solemnly, is the identities of the two fighting parties confirmed? The Umbu member on the side replied, well, one is a Chunin from the branch part of the Hyuga clan, name, Hyuga Kuroto, and the other is Mike Dewey's son, Chunin Mike Guy. Looking at the traces, it seems that the kid from the Hyuga clan has won. Looking around the surrounding trees and the pits of different sizes all over the ground, the Umbu team leader said, they have caused such big disturbances by using only taijutsu techniques, reported to Hokage-sama, these two boys are worthy of attention. On Kuroto's side, when he returned home, he found that Yu was cleaning his house, seeing her Kuroto's heart suddenly felt warm and he forgot all the pain he was feeling. Yu hurriedly came out as soon as she noticed Kuroto, kuroto Kuen, welcome home. Kuroto smiled, Thank you you for taking care of my home while I was away. In the presence of you, Kuroto puts away all his acts, if there is anyone in the Kanoha village that Kuroto can trust unconditionally, it's the girl standing before him. As soon as you came out, she noticed the reddish and swollen arms of Kuroto, and exclaimed in surprise, how come you got injured Kuroto Kuen? Come, I'll bandage you. It's no big deal, I just accidentally got slightly injured during a mock battle, not something to be worried about. However, you didn't listen to Kuroto and pulled him onto the tatami, and started cleaning the wounds. The two sat in silence while Yu was doing her work. After most of the work was done suddenly you spoke, while still applying the medicine to Kuroto's hands, Kuroto Kuen, Hizashi Sama asked me to apologize and ask for your understanding. Hyuga Hizashi is the twin brother of the current patriarch of Hyuga clan, he is responsible for assisting the patriarch in managing the Hyuga branch. Kuroto was a little confused because of what you said, apologize. Apologize to me for what? You said, aren't you angry? Everyone in the clan thinks you are angry at them, so during this period you didn't return to the clan, nor did you interact with anyone, it seems like you are avoiding them. Hearing you say that Kuroto immediately reacted. Undoubtedly, the clan misunderstood. The clan obviously thought that Kuroto had grievances against the clan and complaint that the clan did not speak for him during his involvement in the Orochimaru defection incident, so he probably alienated himself from the rest of the clan. This is obviously not true because Kuroto never thought as such, because he knows, what Hyuga? What Achiha? And what any other clan? On the front, these clans surely do have high political standing but it is not possible for them to influence the final decision-making authorities, i.e. the Hokage and the Elder Council, unless of course, they have a member of their clan a part of it, which is not the case here. The death of Hyuga Hizashi is a clear example of this. Even in the case of legitimate defense done by Hayashi-sama, the clan couldn't influence the village to refuse Cloud Village's demand and ended up sacrificing the twin brother Hizashi-sama in Hayashi-sama's stead. In such a case what authority does the Hyuga clan has to be able to protect him during Orochimaru's defection? Therefore, Kuroto doesn't resent the Hyuga clan because he also knows that they are powerless. 
The alienation from the rest of the clan is only to protect his secret to have awakened the Tensegan to be accidentally discovered, but now that he knows that the clan has misunderstood his intentions, he can use this misunderstanding as an excuse, otherwise, an unreasonable alienation from the rest of the clan will inevitably arouse the suspicion of the elders. While all this was going on in Kuroto's mind, Yu's innocence didn't allow her to discover Kuroto's absent-mindedness while he was cooking some plans, and she continued to speak, Hizashi-sama also said that at today's Jonin Council, the Sanin Jiraiya-sama also praised you, even in the face of Cloud Village's Jinchuriki, you made sure to not to affect Village's reputation by running away or giving up a task. Looking at Yu who seems to be quite happy while informing Kuroto of his great deeds, he asked gently, Jiraiya-sama has returned to Konoha? Hmm Jiraiya-sama returned to Konoha today. Sandem-sama should have called Jiraiya-sama back to stop his tracking of Orochimaru, this shows that the trouble the village is facing is much bigger than he has calculated. Kuroto thought in his heart. In the third shinobi war itself, Konoha didn't have the advantage it did during the second shinobi world war while it was facing the combined attrition from the four great villages. If it were not for the emergence of Namike's Minato, Kanoha's Golden Flash, who was able to reverse the situation on several battlefronts, the war might still have been in the stalemate period, so when the rest of the villages learned that one Sanin defected, Yandame and second generation Jinchuriki both sacrificed themselves, they naturally started having some thoughts of taking advantage of Kanoha's weak situation. Anyway, all that aside. After you applied for medicine on reddish swollen parts of the body, Kuroto took a rest early. The battle with Guy can be said to be one of the hardest battles he fought since he had awakened the Tensegan, but at the same time, this battle also gave him much needed experience. As a Taijutsu sparring partner, Mike Guy is simply impeccable. In the early morning of the next day, Kuroto wrapped his arms and legs with bandages before rushing to the mission center. A short night of rest isn't enough to recover from the injuries, but for the sake of his face, he doesn't want Guy to see him covered in bruises. By the time Kuroto arrived at the mission center, Guy was already waiting at the gate and greeted Kuroto as soon as he saw him coming. Kuroto. Here, here, here. I am. I am here. Looking at Guy who was bouncing around, at the gate of the mission center, Kuroto suddenly felt embarrassed as he also became the center of attention along with Guy. Kuroto obviously didn't reply to Guy's overly excited greeting and directly entered the task room and started flipping through the available A-level task list. Guy didn't seem to notice Kuroto's embarrassment, whispered from the side, Kuroto, isn't his A-level task list that only Jonin can take. Kuroto casually explained, I just led the team to complete an A-level mission a couple of days ago, so I was granted permission to be able to take on A-level tasks. Guy was obviously surprised, what? You completed the A-level mission? For Mike Guy who has only dealt with D-level and C-level tasks, being able to complete B-level tasks is already out of his expectation much less the A-level task that is simply a dream come true. So naturally, he was quite surprised to hear that Kuroto led a team to complete an A-level task as a Chunin himself. Kuroto glanced at Guy and pursed his lips and spoke in fake annoyance, what's so strange about it, I and the Uchiha kid were part of the team, so it is natural for us to complete an A-level task easily. Guy smiled seeing Kuroto's arrogance, that's right I forgot, you are a genius. Kuroto nodded in satisfaction. He just wanted to establish his strong image in Guy's mind, even though the of being called a genius irked him a little, but he doesn't have any other choice if he wants to achieve his purpose. After flipping through pages in the mission file of A-level tasks, one particular mission caught Kuroto's eyes. The objective of the task is, suppress the wandering ninjas in the land of fire. Fighting between ninjas is a very common situation in A-level missions, as such Kuroto has to keep three points in mind before finalizing which mission to choose. 1. The distance to the location of the mission shouldn't be too far, because if the location is too far away then accidents are likely to occur on the way since the third shinobi war has ended not long so it wouldn't be strange if Kuroto encountered another missing like Sasori of the Red Sand or some other S-class ninja of other shinobi villages that might lead to confrontation, Kuroto doesn't want to take the risk. 2. The goal of the mission, i.e., the enemy he would be fighting slash suppressing slash killing shouldn't be too strong. 3. And lastly, the background of the enemy shouldn't be too complicated for Kuroto's own good, at this stage he isn't very interested in making someone enemy that might eventually bite him in the back at some point, so he absolutely doesn't want to attract the hatred of someone, when he already has a Sasori looking for him. Since the mission of suppressing the wandering shinobi in the land of fire perfectly meets all the three conditions as per Kuroto's requirements therefore it is the mission that Kuroto finds to be most suitable to take on. After deciding, Kuroto passed the file to Guy who was eagerly looking in Kuroto's direction to see what is the objective of the mission, Kuroto asked Guy, how about this task? 
As he received the task file Guy quickly went through the mission objective and various other task details and then finally replied, I have no objection. Since that's the case, let's take this task. Kuroto finalized. Hmm. And Guy agreed. After finalizing, Kuroto got the task to register with the staff, and finally, the two chunin set off immediately towards the location specified. On the way, Kuroto analyzed the detailed information about the task provided by the task center when they registered with the staff. The entrusting party of the task is the Daimyo of Fire Nation. Recently, a group of wandering ninjas successively attacked several villages around the border of Fire Nation, causing a lot of loss of life and heavy damages to the property. According to the intelligence reports, there are about five to seven wandering ninjas, who are suspected of being missing mean of the Mist Village, their strength is of Chunin level and their methods are really cruel. Because of the Third Shinobi War, the number of missing mean increased quite a lot. This is the case for all the villages and Kanoha is no exception to this fact, but generally, most of these rebel ninjas who flee from war make their base of operation in and around small countries without any ninja villages to avoid attracting attention from any major ninja village, but that doesn't seem to be the case here. These wandering ninjas have been attacking villages of Fire Nation so blatantly, this fact alone shows that something is definitely off here. The enemy dares to attack and plunder from the villages of Fire Nation so openly, this means the strength of the enemy is definitely not weak, make sure to not take them lightly and do not make any careless mistake. Kuroto made sure to warn Guy about the seriousness of the matter. Guy also nodded seriously to Kuroto's words. From Guy's reaction, Kuroto noticed that he is a little nervous so Kuroto decided to ease his thoughts a little, don't get too nervous, although I am saying that this matter isn't as simple as it appears to be, but that's not necessarily that big of a deal after all the enemy is only attacking the civilian parties, so as long as we don't make any stupid mistake, there shouldn't be any problem completing the task. Listening to Kuroto's words Guy clenched his fists and spoke with vigor, I'm not afraid of them. Kuroto just smiled at Guy's action and the two then continued their journey. A few days later, Kuroto and Guy traveled all the way to a village that had been attacked not long ago. From the state of the village, it is not difficult to guess that it has been attacked not long ago. The whole village appears to be in a mess with corpses all over the place, the air-filled strong stench of blood, and the sound of crying and wailing of the few survivors all around. As soon as Kuroto and Guy reached the village they both were shocked by witnessing the horrendous state this village was in. It wasn't their first visit to a place with such a bad situation, after all both of them have experienced a war not long ago but the scene here is equally troubling even when the war has ended. This just shows the suffering of the common folks at the hands of shinobi. After arriving at the village, Kuroto came to a survivor and asked, We are shinobi from Kanoha village, can you describe to us who attacked this village? The survivor's expression was quite dull, for a while he seems to stare at Kuroto in a dazed state, and finally replied, I don't know who are they. They kept killing, and killing, and killing, and then, then, they, left, they just left after killing them all. Midway through the speech he started crying and couldn't even express his words properly. Kuroto, although a little shocked but wasn't much affected by witnessing the tragedy this village faced and continued asking calmly, how many people were there in total? How long ago they left? And, did see the direction they left in? Upon Kuroto's further questioning, the survivor pointed in a direction, they left in that direction. I. I don't know how many they are, and it's been a few hours since they left. Kuroto stared at the direction pointed by the survivor, and then stated coldly, we'll chase. Guy, who was opposite to Kuroto already filled with righteous indignation, nodded fiercely, hmm. For the people of the Hyuga clan, tracking is a basic course, every member of the Hyuga clan who has been to the battlefield is a tracking master, and Kuroto is no exception to this fact, so he quickly found the traces of tracks left by the enemy. After following the tracks for a while, the two chunin arrived in front of a quagmire. There were signs of footprints still left, upon checking which Kuroto reached a conclusion, the information in the task objective is accurate, there are most likely five shinobi on the enemy side, and since they didn't care of hiding their steps their strength also doesn't seem to be very high or most likely they were in a great hurry. Listening to Kuroto's conclusion, Guy anxiously said, then what are we waiting for, let's catch up. However, Kuroto shook his head, and pointed towards a big tree not far away, don't panic, look at the moss on that tree. Guy looked in the direction pointed by Kuroto only to notice, the half footprint left on the moss collected on the bark of the big tree. He wondered, why are there footprints here? Does that mean someone else is following this group of shinobis? These footprints in the quagmire obviously do not belong to the same group of shinobi. 
If the footprints in this quagmire belong to the group of wandering ninjas, then the footprints on that tree should have been left by another shinobi. Hmm, that's most likely the case. Since we took this task so Kanoha should not have sent anyone else on this task, therefore the most likely suspect that the other group of shinobi who are following those wandering ninjas must be from the village hidden in the mist. Kuroto nodded to Gai's question as well as gave his thoughts on who might be the third party involved in this mission. And Kuroto's explanation isn't without a reason, since they have received that these rebellious ninjas were most likely part of the village hidden in the mist so it isn't strange for Mist Village to send their tracking and hunting unit. Since this mission now involves another one of the five great ninja villages therefore Guy seems to out of options on what to do, then what should we do? Kuroto pondered over the matter for a while, and then firmly replied, anything and everything that hinders us from completing the task should be treated as an enemy. But. No buts let's chase after them. After following the tracks for a while, Kuroto and Guy finally caught up with the two other parties, however, they had to hide because two ninjas were confronting each other. A total of four ninjas dressed in umbu uniform were on one side, only the leader didn't wear an umbu mask. Instead, he wrapped the lower part of his face with a bandage. Based on his figure and appearance, Kuroto recognized him as Momochi Zabuza. On the other side, there are only two people, both being Kanoha Zumbu, one of them was quite young, with silver white hair. Although he was wearing a kitsune mask, Kuroto recognized that he is the genius ninja of the same generation named, Hataki Kakashi. Both sides were full of war intentions and ready to confront each other at any moment. Seeing that more Kanoha ninja arrived, Zabuza lifted the long sword behind, as if he was about to initiate the attack. While standing on the branch of a tree, Kuroto condescendingly glanced at the Mist Umbu ninja with one hand on his waist said with an arrogant expression, showing his contempt for the other party, leave. Zabuza who heard the contempt Kuroto showed was now furious, do you want to die brat? Kuroto didn't bother to answer Zabuza and lightly ordered Guy, Guy, go and teach him not to mess with Kanoha Shinobi. And Guy who has become accustomed to obeying Kuroto's instructions along the way didn't care whether the other party was a missed shinobi, so following the order, he shouted an acknowledgement and rushed to Zabuza. Both the missed Umbu and Kanoha Umbu were taken aback by the arrogant behavior shown by Kuroto and Guy, but being a trained shinobi still allowed both parties to take action immediately. Just gave way to some area for Zabuza and Guy to fight one-on-one. -on -one. As a ninja that specializes in taijutsu combat, Guy continued to dominate close quarter combat and didn't give the opponent any chance to use ninjutsu. However, Zabuza isn't a simple enemy, he seems to have confidence in his sword skills, therefore he wasn't afraid of taijutsu and kenjutsu battle. For some time, the exchange of punches and the blade arcs flew all around. At this time Momochi Zabuza is already a famous ninja of the Mist Village. Although he is not yet promoted as seven ninja swordsman of the Mist Village, he is still one of the best among the peers of the same generation in the Mist Village. All his moves are sharp and extremely dangerous for the enemy. Mike Guy is also in the phase of rapid growth in his strength, his speed, strength have all increased dramatically every day. He isn't the same guy during the academy days where he was treated as the tail of the crane. The battle between these two individuals soon heated up, and their range of moves spread wider and wider, causing the two missed umbus who were watching to retreat to a further distance. Not long after, Guy kicked launched a kick towards Zabuza's face that the other party blocked with the blunt part of his broad sword, after exchanging this blow both of them leaped further away from each other, leaving the contact, and the scene fell into a strange silence. After the two sides retreated, the scene suddenly fell into a strange silence. Guy looked solemn. After this short confrontation with Zabuza, more than 10 stab or cut wounds appeared on his body, although these wounds were really shallow and not really penetrating through his skin, he was injured anyway. Zabuza was also not in a much better condition, he was panting heavily while holding his broad sword. During the confrontation, Guy was able to deliver a kick to Zabuza in the ribs, the effect seemed to be certainly visible from Zabuza's current state who was unable to straighten his waist properly, and signs of feeling dull pain were visible from his breathing. Kuroto standing on the tree saw this opportunity and immediately said, Guy, you can retreat, let me handle him from here on. Guy didn't argue to Kuroto's order and silently stepped back for a quick retreat. Although the confrontation just now was short, it did allow Guy to weigh his options against Momochi Zabuza. He understands it all full well that if not for using Hashiman Tanku, it would be really difficult for him to beat the enemy. As soon as Guy retreated, Kuroto silently stepped down on the ground below from the tree branch. In the presence of everyone, Kuroto calmly walked forward towards Zabuza and said with the same contemptuous tone, I am different from Guy, I won't need to get so serious to deal with a low-level, no-name, pathetic missed ninja like you. 
Kuroto's tone clearly showed he was looking down at Zabuza similar to how Boa Hancock looks down on everyone except for Luffy, he was clearly expressing that he was talking to a pathetic bug he could squash at his whim, or at least that's what he wants everyone here to believe. But where did Zabuza receive such contempt? He was now furious for being looked down on, a brat like you dare to call me a no-name. That's it now you have done it. Step. Step. Fush. Kuroto immediately injected Chakra into his legs and rushed towards Zabuza at a flashing speed. This was the opportunity he was waiting for. Although Zabuza was surprised by Kuroto's sudden change of actions, but he wasn't just some rookie ninja, after all, refocusing his mind to the state of battle ready, he immediately slashed his sword horizontally opposite to the direction of Kuroto's incoming momentum. Swish. The cutting wind generated by the slash rushed in Kuroto's direction. But Kuroto wasn't afraid at all, and no one has noticed the Tensegan shining with magnificent light under the goggles he was wearing. Through the incomparable insight on the Tensegan, he had already noticed the flow of chakra in Zabuza rushing towards the chakra veins in his hands, and at the same time, there was no chakra rushing towards his legs at such intensity adding to the fact that there was no sharp contraction of muscles in his legs. This series of small details led Kuroto to know Zabuza's tactical intentions in advance. Zabuza made the horizontal slash just to force Kuroto back, the leg muscles didn't contract to show there would be no follow-up chasing or incoming sword slash attacks towards Kuroto's retreat, and since the chakra was still continuously rushing towards his hands indicated that he plans to use ninjutsu attack to follow up the previous slash. After understanding Zabuza's intention and making all the tactical calculations in a matter of split seconds, Kuroto directed chakra in his muscles accordingly. For the others witnessing the fight, Kuroto suddenly stopped leaned back a little, and then rushed towards at a faster speed. Kuroto's whole set of movements were done in an instant while avoiding the cross slash, with almost no extra effort, he didn't retreat and went ahead in Zabuza's direction. What? Seeing that the enemy didn't change his direction or retreated, it seemed that he wasn't worried whether Zabuza would add a follow-up sword slash, instead use ninjutsu in the direction of his retreat, that is if he did retreat. Instantly he realized that Kuroto has seen through his tactic, but now it was already too late to change his course of action, Kuroto was already very close and not at all deceived, as soon as he approached Zabuza, he waved his hands and struck a series of gentle fist attacks. Seeing the incoming strike, Zabuza's heart couldn't calm down. At this moment, whether he swings the sword or directly discard it to make a series of hand seals to launch some ninjutsu attack, it was already too late. Bang, bang, and bang. A series of low muffling sounds of palm hitting the body sounded in the field, but it was transmitted clearly to the ears of everyone present here. Amidst the sound of the palm strikes, Zabuza's body trembled and finally dropped to the ground like a deflated ball. Plop. Hisses. Whether it was the other three umbu of the mist village or Kanoha's umbu, both sides took a cold breath. Not for anything but because Kuroto solved Zabuza like a piece of cake. Is it so simple to defeat Zabuza? Obviously, no. The strength of Momochi Zabuza is simply amazing, neither Hitaki Kakashi, hailed as the most genius in this generation of Kanoha Shinobi, nor the Umbu Shinobi standing next to him would be able to win against him with complete certainty. But Kuroto appeared so relaxed, the confrontation was so simple, and he defeated Zabuza pretty easily as if the opponent was just some fledgling underdog. Kuroto's on the other hand, still kept the indifferent and cold expression. He glanced at the three other missed shinobi standing not far away, turned around, and kicked the unconscious Zabuza in their direction. Take him and get out. The three missed shinobis supported Zabuza, while one of them spoke, we are ordered to hunt down the rebellious Nin. Upon hearing this reply Kuroto raised his head slightly, looked at the missed ninjas, and said coldly, the rebellious Nin you speak of is my target. If any of you dare to intervene, I don't mind disposing of you lot together. Seeing the unconscious Zabuza and two more Kanoha Umbu, standing not very far away, Mist's group looked at each other, nodded to each other, and then hurriedly retreated while carrying Zabuza on their backs. After the Mist Shinobis retreated Kuroto didn't speak anything to the Umbu, directly called Guy, who had wrapped his wounds, and continued to chase after the mission target. After both Guy and Kuroto left, the two Kanoha Umbu ninja looked at each other. The elder Umbu muttered, Hey, did that kid used Revolving Heaven just now? Is he from the Hyuga clan? Kakashi who was still in his kitsune mask nodded to the elder Umbu's word and spoke, well, I know both of them. We are from the same class from the academy, one is Might Guy, and the other one is Hyuga Kuroto. Elder Umbu was surprised by Kakashi's words, if I remember correctly, in your year, other than you there were no promising students, right? Then how come both of them were so strong? 
That's right, most of the shinobis of Kakashi's year have already died in the war, and those who survived were high-level chunin, only Kakashi was ahead of his pairs and managed to qualify as a jonin at such a young age, so in the eyes of Umbu, Hitaki Kakashi is the most genius of his generation, but here it appears that's not entirely the case. Kakashi was also at a loss at this moment. He didn't have a very deep impression of Kuroto, according to his understanding Hyuga Kuroto was a mediocre student and didn't have any sort of talent to attract any attention to himself, but Kuroto's performance today really surprised him, the attitude and confidence Kuroto showed in the face of the assassination unit of the Mist Village, unconsciously reminded Kakashi of his teacher, Namikaze Minato. The elder Umbu continued with some emotions in his words, make sure to write down the event of today and report to Hokage-sama after returning. Such talents should be brought to Umbu first, especially in the situation the village is facing currently. On Kuroto's side. Guy couldn't help but ask Kuroto, Kuroto, why don't we just ask the Umbu ninja if they have any information about those rebellious ninjas? Kuroto smiled upon hearing Guy's question, because it would be pointless, so there is no need for that since the mist assassination unit appeared here indicates that those wandering ninjas are indeed rebellious men of mist village, and the appearance of Kanoha Umbu here should be only for monitoring this very assassination unit, otherwise they would have already started the battle. Now there is no need to think anymore, it is not difficult to guess. Mist Village sent assassination unit simply means they want to clean up their mess themselves and take away the corpses with them. This means that there might be a ninja among the rebels with Kekai Genkai unique to the Mist Village. Kakashi and the other Umbu were obviously sent to monitor the entry of the Mist assassination unit in the Land of Fire, this can be confirmed because they didn't start the battle but only stood in a stalemate. Now that guy heard Kuroto's words, it made sense. If the Kanoha Umbu ninjas were only responsible for monitoring the entry of the Mist Assassination Unit, then they wouldn't have exact information about the team of those wandering ninjas. Moreover, I have already locked the traces of the team of wandering ninjas, so there's no need to delay any time. Thought Kuroto silently. Then they continued to chase when suddenly Guy said, Kuroto, what you did just now in the battle just now was really beautiful, I really didn't expect that the enemy couldn't even stop or counter your approach. Kuroto's lips curved slightly after hearing Guy praise him, although only slightly but he smiled in a reserved manner. In the performance just now, Kuroto was actually a little proud, but he would not let it go to his head. The reason for that is very simple. No matter how strong Zabuza is, after a hard fight with Guy both his stamina and physical strength were consumed a lot, and the most important thing is that he had broken a few ribs. Although a small injury from a shinobi standard that wasn't very visible from the outside, but it still had a great impact on his combat capacity, especially limited his physical skills. This is one of the main reasons why Zabuza intended to make Kuroto fall back and rely on the long-range ninjutsu tactics because engaging in taijutsu combat would have undoubtedly given Kuroto an advantage because of his ribs injury. Therefore, it won't be wrong to say that Kuroto not only took advantage of the opponent's injury but also exploited it pretty effectively, and coupled with the advantage provided by the incomparable insight of the Tensigen, his win was pretty much guaranteed. Various factors piled together to create this quick victory for Kuroto. Of course, it also shows that Kuroto is changing. His original mediocre self is disappearing and is now being replaced by a powerful person with great determination and keen insight who is good at grasping the right opportunities. Guy who was running on the side asked with some curiosity at this moment, Kuroto, you didn't seem to be afraid of those missed shinobis, what do you think was their shinobi rank? Kuroto replied, he should only be a tokubetsu jonin at best. In particular, although tokubetsu jonin also falls in the category of a jonin, they are actually quite different from the real jonin level, because the term jonin is a very broad ranking concept with many monsters hidden in it, and in some cases, various kaga level powerhouses also falls in this rank. On the other hand, Tokubetsu Jonin is a very special class, because the truly strong ninjas easily get promoted to a Jonin quickly, therefore, most of the ninjas who stay at Tokubetsu Jonin rank are inferior to real Jonin ninjas, and the probability of encountering a Kaga level shinobi in this ranking is much less. Secondly, Kuroto's attitude towards the Mist Village shinobi wasn't entirely because of his confidence in his strength, but also partly an act. In fact, Kuroto already began his performance as soon as he was aware of the Kanoha Umbu's confronting Mist Village assassination unit. Kuroto wants to change the image of his previous mediocre self, but he doesn't want to be seen as an aggressive or ardent person either, therefore who to use as his stepping stone to achieving this objective is very important for him, in terms of strength he has already reached the level of a tokubetsu jonin, only the lack of combat experience is a problem for him, therefore suitable opponents are important for both aspects, and luckily enough these missed shinobis just so happens to fill both. The Category 
His arrogant attitude against the enemy was also a planned tactic, belonging to the Hyuga clan, one of the major clan of Kanoha village makes his status to be classified as a noble, even if he is of the branch part, so being a rich and powerful with slight arrogance makes for a perfect image for a shinobi with noble lineage. And, being a little arrogant makes it difficult for others to mess around with him. When facing an arrogant person, truly smart individuals will definitely think twice before having any unhealthy idea or provoking him for their own good, and this will eventually reduce many troubles for him. But there is one more reason that prompted Kuroto to build a strong image for himself as soon as possible. A few days back he learned from you a piece of information that is very useful for him. In view of the shortage of manpower in the village, the senior management has decided to select a group of individuals to be promoted to the rank of Tokabetsu Jonin. And Kuroto definitely wants to seize this opportunity, to get rid of his status as a chunin promoted during wartime. Currently, his shinobi status is much inferior to that of a normal chunin. Therefore, if he becomes a tokabetsu jonin it would be equivalent to stepping up two ranks in one small leap, and he would have surpassed all the chunin and free from the status of being classified as cannon fodder class by being viewed as a member of high-level combat power in the village. By becoming a tokabetsu jonin B can also submit requests to the village to learn some advanced ninjutsu and even some secret skills if shows his appropriate worth by accumulating the trust of village authorities. In the beginning, Yandem sama also gained the opportunity to learn Hiratian no jutsu by accumulating merit points on the battlefield of the second shinobi world war and completing various missions, and obtaining Hiratian no jutsu allowed him to lay out a solid foundation for him to eventually reach the combat class of a kage level shinobi in due time. And Kuroto isn't going to waste this opportunity either, therefore becoming a tokabetsu jonin is much important for him to obtain some resources, who don't have any inheritance left to him. While all this was going on within Kuroto's head, both of them finally found the group of wandering shinobi. There was a total of five of them, all dressed in mist shinobi uniform, the leader had white hair tied in a bun with two scarlet dots on his forehead which indicated that he is a member of the Kagaya clan belonging to the mist village. As soon as Kuroto realized the enemy he spoke in a low voice, be careful he seems to be a member of the Kagaya clan with Shikatsumyako Kekiai Genkai. Guy nodded cautiously. The well-known Kagaya clan isn't something to be taken so lightly, Guy, who has experienced the war on the mist front knows this better than Kuroto, the Kagaya clan is both notoriously powerful and psychologically crazy beyond recovery, therefore they are really feared on the battlefield. While Kuroto and Guy were analyzing the enemy while still being hidden, one of the rebellious shinobi standing opposite to the ninja of Kagaya clan among them spoke out loud, did Kanoha get so weak to have sent two brats to chase us? The other companions also laughed and teased, ha 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 ha. I heard that Kanoha's Yandame Hokage died in his own village not long ago. It seems that the days when Kanoha was hailed as the strongest of the five ninja village is coming to an end. Ha 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 ha. Not being provoked because of the mockery, Kuroto looked around and confirmed that there was no other presence nearby, and he decided to try out something that he thought of just now. Shikatsumyako Kekiai Genkai of the Kagaya clan combined with their superb physique almost integrates attack and defense. The general method of combat and weapons won't be of much use against them. Even the gentle fist may not be much effective in penetrating the skeletal carcass of Shikatsumyako Kekai Genkai, therefore Kagaya clan is said to have unmatchable taijutsu skills, and unfortunately for the two chunin, both of them are taijutsu specialists. Therefore, Kuroto decided to use rain will assault, to attract the leader of this wandering ninja unit and try to seal his chakra with a gentle fist strike before the opponent could activate his Kekai Genkai. After making up his mind, Kuroto deliberately showed a weak front to make the enemy less cautious of him, this is the territory of the Fire Nation, please leave immediately. When the enemy ninjas heard Kuroto's plea, they laughed unscrupulously, some even became so carefree to even take out wine flask from their waist pocket and started drinking wine, not at all being watchful of Kuroto and Guy. Nice. Kuroto thought inwardly. Taking a few steps forward, Kuroto pretended to present a little weak stubborn attitude, and shouted, if you don't leave at this very instant, then don't blame Kanoha for being rude. Now, this attracted the attention of all the others, Kuroto was using the backing provided by the Kanoha village, therefore the ninja of the Kagaya clan also walked forward a few steps towards Kuroto, and said with a mocking smile, boy, you know who I a. Eh? Just halfway through his sentence, then suddenly he felt a strong force acting on him and drawing him in the direction of Kuroto. As soon as the target flew up, Kuroto intercepted him instantly. Originally, there was only a gap of about 10 meters between the two parties, and as the enemy walked closer to reduce that distance, he reached towards Kuroto in the blink of an eye under the acting force of rain wheel, as soon as the two sides intercepted. Bang, bang, bang. 
With the muffled sound of palm strikes, the ninja of the Kagaya clan didn't even get the opportunity to active his Kekai Genkai ability, due to chakra points being sealed by gentle palm strikes. Sealing all the chakra points wasn't the end, Kuroto went further and used gossip palm strikes against him, aiming at the vital points and due to the enemy being unable to protect himself, it destroyed his brain. As a result of which the whole person fell to the ground like a sandbag without being able to do anything. These rebellious shinobi are different from the mist assassination unit they faced not long ago, the task requirement is to dispose of these ninjas, therefore Kuroto went for the killing strikes from the very beginning. At the same time, Kuroto initiated the attack he also signaled Guy, therefore, Guy also went ahead to start his series of close quarter combat with the other shinobi. Except for the ninja of the Kagaya clan, the other four were only high level genin therefore even before Kuroto could come to support Guy, they were already lying in a pool of blood. Kuroto and Guy didn't waste any time, after rechecking of anyone's presence around and repeatedly confirming that no one else was left to be disposed of, they sealed the corpses of ninjas in the sealing scroll and returned to the village without any more delay. On the way, Guy couldn't help but ask in wonder, Kuroto, what was that attack just now? How come the leader of these wandering shinobi flew towards you? Kuroto smiled and spoke with an arrogant snort, don't think that you are the only one with a secret technique at his disposal. The trick I just used is a secret technique too. Guy doesn't have any Kekai Genkai himself, but his acuity isn't weak and his mastery of strong fist taijutsu is especially very high, so Kuroto's use of rain will naturally will not escape Guy's perception at such a close range. But Guy didn't think much about it. Since Kuroto explained that it is a secret technique, he immediately exclaimed in surprise, I didn't even notice it, until the Kagaya clan shinobi was already very close, I have to say, your technique is really very powerful. Rain Wheel is the same as Tendo Pain's Shinra Tensei. It's a really strong technique and doesn't even need seal printing, so it can be used at a moment's notice. Those unaware of its existence are very easy to get caught in the first encounter under a surprise attack. Not long even Sasori of the Red Sand was almost taken by surprise, by this technique, and he still lost the Sandame Kazakage puppet that is now in Kuroto's control, this just goes to show just how useful is Rain Will in changing the battle situation. At this time, Kuroto put his smile away and said solemnly, remember, don't reveal information about this technique to anyone, it's a secret technique which will actually be effective only if its information isn't known to the other party. The secret of Rain Wheel is also one of the reasons why Kuroto didn't choose to capture the wandering ninjas alive but was eliminated on the spot. Guy nodded to Kuroto's words, I understand, I won't tell about it to anyone. Kuroto wasn't worried whether Guy would accidentally reveal this information, although the said party looks a bit funny and comical, Kuroto knows it full well that Guy is actually a very disciplined shinobi. After some more discussions both Kuroto and Guy speeded their travel speed to return to the village as early as possible. Back to the village, Hyuga Kuroto and Mike Guy went straight to the task center and deliver a comprehensive task completion report along with the proof of the completion in the form of five corpses. Since the mission was completed perfectly, the authority of Team Hyuga Kuroto was increased again, and now all the A-class tasks including assassination missions were open to Team Kuroto. Because Kuroto not only completed the mission perfectly but also managed to gain a corpse of Mist Shinobi with Shikatsumyako Kekai Genkai, so which was considered over completion. A ninja's body is, to a certain extent, a source of intelligence. In particular, the corpse of a ninja with some kind of Kekai Genkai is of a greater research value, so during the war period, the major ninja villages generally organize a capable corpse collection team, specifically responsible for collecting the corpses of ninjas with Kekai Genkai for the purpose of research. In the following months, Kuroto and Guy completed tasks like Madman. As Chunin, they completed four more A-level missions and nine B-level missions with a very efficient rate, the two-man team now attracted quite the attention from other shinobi for their effective task completion. The receptionist at the mission center also began to take the initiative to screen out the mission's team Kuroto to provide better convenience. After completing another B-level mission, Kuroto who was on his way home suddenly felt someone spying on him. He observed his surroundings calmly but couldn't find anything to confirm this feeling. Although people were passing by him on the surrounding streets, it didn't appear as though someone was hiding in the dark. Kuroto can be very sure of this because of the Tensigen, but he still felt that someone or something was spying on him. It made him wonder why he suddenly felt as such. Then suddenly he thought of a secret technique that could have been used to give Kuroto this feeling, a secret technique used by Sandame Hokage-sama. Crystal Ball Jutsu. Does that mean Hokage-sama spying on me? It seems that the hard work of the past few months has finally allowed me to enter Sandim Sama's field of vision. After guessing that it might be Hokage Sama secretly spying on him, Kuroto didn't care too much. 
The snooping of Sandim Sama obviously meant that he has started to consider candidates, and Hyuga Kuroto is under inspection, otherwise, given the current situation of the village, Kuroto doesn't believe Sandim Sama who are busy with official duties and much important paperwork will be interested in observing some chunin. Such spying lasted for a month. Kuroto is originally very cautious of his actions, and after realizing that Sandim Sama might be spying on him, he became more mindful of his actions. There was no abnormal behavior. Except for performing tasks continuously, he can be quite sure that Sandim Sama won't find anything else. And sure enough, it didn't take long for Kuroto to receive a notice for being selected as a candidate for internal assessment for promotion to the rank of a Tokabetsu Jonin. Tokabetsu Jonin is regarded as the high-level combat power of the village. Although the village can mobilize tens of thousands of shinobis in the war period, in fact, the number of jonin and tokabetsu jonin are limited to a few hundred, the remaining percentage of shinobi are chunin and genin. This difference in number signifies that a tokabetsu jonin has the status and power of a deputy commander. During the war period, a tokabetsu jonin is even required to command several three-man teams to perform tasks. The site of the assessment was an umbu secret base, upon reaching the exam site Kuroto found several familiar faces. Among the candidates, there were various shinobi of his generation including, Mike Gai, Yuhi Kurinai, Saratobi Asuma, Yumino Iruka, Mitarashi Enko, Shiranui Genma, Heiate Gekko, Ebisu, and others. These chunin ninjas are of the same generation as Kuroto, other than them there are also many elite chunin who have already reached middle age, and there is also the figure of Uchiha Shirsue, a genius shinobi from the Uchiha clan who is only a few years younger than Kuroto. As soon as Kuroto entered the selection grounds, he could hear Gai shout from a distance, Kuroto, here, here. Not intending to embarrass Gai Kuroto walked over and greeted his teammate and other shinobi of the same generation together at the same time. If it was before Kuroto would be a little reserved in getting along with this group of people, after all, shinobi is a profession that regards strength to be a very important factor. If there is no strength, even if the opposite party is a classmate from the same year, their relationship will never be truly harmonious. Fortunately for Kuroto, that's no longer the case here, he is confident enough in dealing with these classmates calmly, in terms of mental fortitude he even feels a little superior over the rest. Seeing Kuroto's indifferent cold face, Sarutobi Asuma decided to take the initiative, Hey Kuroto, I heard that you and Guy have completed several A-level missions in a very short period, is that really true? Attracted by Asuma's question the rest of the shinobi also focused their attention on Kuroto, obviously, they are very interested in listening to the candidate of the talk of the town. Kuroto nodded arrogantly, yeah. Guy on the side also laughed and said, how about it? I didn't lie, did I? We really did complete many A-class and B-class missions in the past few months. As the person in question always being laughed at by everyone, Guy has always been listening to others gloat and brag about their strength and achievements, but today, it is finally his turn to boast, naturally, he is in a surprisingly good mood. When the tail of the crane, like Guy now became an object of reverence, everyone's mood was obviously a little down, but everyone here is a shinobi they have a strong mind so the topic gradually changed during the waiting period for the tokabetsu jonin test. Asuma glanced around, and then whispered in a low voice only for everyone to hear, I heard that more than 200 chunin candidates are participating in the assessment, and there are only 15 spots available for tokabetsu jonin rank. Hiss. Everyone took a shocking breath. More than 200 participants competing for 15 spots, this means that one selection per 13 or 14 individuals, how tough it would be to be ranked up to a tokabetsu jonin can be imagined from this fact alone. Asuma's early information naturally made many of these chunin ninjas depressed, Iruka said in a pessimistic mood, it seems to be hopeless right now. Kurinai and Ebisu also sighed, apparently as unconfident as Iruka. Seeing Iruka sighing in such a depressed manner, Asuma looked dissatisfied, hey, can't you have a little confidence over yourself? that bastard Kakashi has already reached the rank of a jonin ninja so long ago, how can we give up so easily? As the son of Sandame Hokage, Asuma has been left behind by Kakashi, this has always been Asuma's heart knot, and the fact that sometimes Sandame Sama even uses the example of Hitaki Kakashi to educate him, which makes him very depressed. Guy on the side who considers Kakashi as his eternal rival also clenched his fists and agreed, yes, we must catch up with Kakashi, as soon as possible. Kuroto on the side didn't bother in getting involved in the discussion of how to catch up with Kakashi when the likes of Abito, Nagato, Tonari, and Madara are the enemies he is preparing himself to fight against. Therefore, Kuroto took the time to observe other candidates, he roughly counted and the result was the same as Asuma said, there are most like about 200 chunin ninjas here. However, none of them had a very high amount of chakra, this made him confident enough in his abilities. 
As Kuroto was analyzing the candidates, a young ninja came to the front and spoke, Senpai, thank you for taking care of Itachi. He has mentioned about to me several times and said that you are a very good ninja. Kuroto looked at the other party and asked, if I am not wrong you are Uchiha Shursue. Upon realizing his mistake Shursue apologized, please forgive me for my rudeness in not introducing myself, Senpai, I am Uchiha Shursue. Looking carefully at the young Uchiha, who was not very tall standing in front of him, Kuroto's thoughts suddenly dispersed. Uchiha Shursue. A young boy who played a much crucial role in directing Itachi's life, an indirect cause of Uchiha's genocide, a young man who gave his entire loyalty and heart to the village but was relentlessly disappointed, another one of those individuals betrayed and suffered at the hands of Shimura Danzo. After losing his men Gekyo Sharingan to Shimura Danzo, to avoid further escalating the conflict between the Uchiha clan and the Kanoha village, he resolutely committed suicide silently. Perhaps the only Uchiha who was a more genius than Itachi, ended his short life in a really tragic way. Thinking about Shursue's future, Kuroto couldn't help but sigh heavily. Shursue's sad end isn't inseparable from his naivety. He shouldn't have exposed his men Gekyo Sharingan, let alone disclose his dojitsu technique, the Kato Amatsukami, to the elder council of the village. Even if it is Kuroto and Sandim Sama's position, and if the Uchihas are planning a coup d'etat, then the appearance of a strong ninja with such an influencing jutsu at hand will definitely make him feel uncomfortable. This is why, even if Shursue showed complete loyalty to Kanoha, he still couldn't gain the trust of the elder council. It's really sad. Kuroto sighed. Condensing his divergent thoughts, Kuroto smiled, I have heard a lot of legends about the Sharingan. I hope to be able to battle you to get the chance of experiencing the power of the Sharingan personally. Shursue also smiled, compared with Senpai Spiwakugan of the Hyuga clan, there is not much advantage that comes with the Sharingan, but I still look forward to getting the chance of having a battle with you. Translator's note, total bullshit. Sharingan doesn't come with advantages. If that's the case then it might as well be better to say that the Rinnegan only provides a beautiful color to the eyes. There's a limit to being a humble individual. After a few more polite words, Shursue turned and left. Shursue knows it very well that the suspicion of causing the Kyuubi's rebellion falls upon the Uchiha clan, so he kept a certain distance from the other ninjas in the village to protect himself and the other side. Looking at Shursue's back that is gradually moving away, Kuroto couldn't help but sigh again. In Kuroto's opinion, Uchiha's idea of coup d'etat was ridiculous, as there were only three clansmen with enough strength to have some chance of making out any difference, but the more troublesome thought was that all three of them were either not sure or had opposite thoughts. Of those three, Shursue and Itachi didn't agree with the idea of a coup. Not to mention the patriarch Uchiha Fugaku himself didn't want to choose that course. It was only because the rest of the Uchiha clan was angered at the unfairness they were facing did he agree to the plan. His will for the coup was still not very strong and it collapsed completely after his son's rebellion. Uchiha Fugaku gave up all the resistance and fulfilled to play a deep role in Itachi's path as a shinobi with his own life and his last words. And it is also really hard to say whether the Uchiha would have successfully won the coup d'etat even if Fugaku, Shursue, and Itachi all three supported the idea. And if the coup really happened with three united, although not be able to take over Kanoha, they could have still destroyed it entirely. Shursue himself could have wiped out the entire resistance from the Elder Council of Kanoha with Kato Emitsukami. Just as Kuroto sighed at the fate that the Uchihas went through, Guy approached him and whispered in a low voice, Hey, although this kid Shursue is very famous, he seems to be quite approachable among the Uchiha. Genma and Gekko who were standing on the side coldly said, It depends on who he is talking to. Kuroto is from the Hyuga clan, so obviously, the other party will be polite, but if it is changed to you or someone else, he may not even pay attention. Asuma also leaned over and said with a serious face, this guy is not easy from what I've heard about him, if you encounter him during the assessment, be extra careful. Guy looked curious, is he that good? I heard that he has a record of successfully killing three jonin of the Mist Village. He is a recognized genius of the Uchiha clan, after a pause, Asuma continued, I heard my old say that his strength is already enough to be promoted as a jonin, this time participating in the Tokubetsu jonin selection is actually just for appearances sake. Everyone was surprised, what? Looking at the surprised people, Asuma just shrugged, what's weird about it? Take a good look around you, he is the only Uchiha ninja here, which already explains it all. With that said, everyone immediately looked around. And it was true that in the crowd present here, the ninja wearing Uchiha's crest was only Uchiha Shursue. Upon realizing the meaning of what this implied everyone's face sank. 
As Suma obviously didn't speak wrong, this means that in the promotion assessment one spot has already been reserved for Uchiha Shursue, of course, there's nothing wrong with it, given Shursue's strength, it is obviously a breeze for him to pass the selection naturally and such a reason also limits the Uchiha clan to send more ninjas of their clan as it would cause useless competition for the same spot, as the only one spot is reserved for the Uchiha. However, that's not the only thing Kuroto noticed, upon looking around he realized that no other Hyuga clansmen were participating in this assessment apart from him, and he thought silently, is there any agreement between the Hyuga clan and the village, and a spot was also reserved for me? Seeing the change of Kuroto's expression, Asuma winked from the side and patted his shoulder, you realized it didn't you? The Hyuga clan must have also reserved a spot for you. Kuroto folded his arms and snorted unhappily, what a superfluous action. If Kuroto says he is disgusted over the thought of going through the back door or something, then it would him being hypocritical because Kuroto doesn't believe in fairness and virtue, it's always survival of the fittest and strongest, and having a noble status comes with its own set of benefits, therefore, it is not a problem for him, but in front of this group of classmates, he must show disdain for exploiting this kind of privilege or unfairness. Yeah, with Kuroto's strength, passing through this assessment shouldn't be a problem. As Kuroto's teammate, Guy supported Kuroto's words, although he couldn't have known Kuroto's inner thoughts. Everyone has also heard rumors of Kuroto's strength and knows that his strength has indeed grown very fast, so they nodded in agreement, and the fact that the children of the noble clans have some privileges, everyone takes it for granted, so although a little surprised, no one fretted over it. At this time, the Sandim Sama finally made his appearance at the assessment grounds. Those taking part in this assessment are all experienced ninjas, so Sandim Sama were not wordy and directly announced the rules of the assessment. This time the focus of assessment will be combat strength. As long as the overall combat strength of the candidate meets the sufficient standards, or if they specialize in a certain aspect that is considered difficult to be matched by others, then they will be qualified to pass the assessment. These rules make it much easier for the ninjas with Kekai Genkai or those with mastery of some secret technique to have a serious advantage over the ninjas of commoner origin to pass the assessment. The opponent in the assessment will be selected from a random lottery. In the first round of assessment, Kuroto's opponent is Yuhi Kurinai. On the ninth combat range. Kuroto with one hand on his said calmly, Kurinai-chan, it seems your luck is not very good. Kurinai's face was a little gloomy, she was trying to keep a calm facade, didn't reply to Kuroto's provocation, just staring intently at Kuroto, seems to be looking for a flaw to exploit to her advantage. As a ninja specializing in the use of genjutsu, it is really not easy to battle against ninjas specializing in taijutsu more against someone with a kekai genkai like the byakugan much less the tensigen. It is already a known fact that dojutsu type kekai genkai, whether it is the byakugan or the sharingan, there is a certain degree of natural resistance to being affected by genjutsu, although not 100% but the effect will be greatly reduced. This is also a reason why Kuroto is very curious about how the Tensigen would react if influenced by a Genjutsu, to find out, he didn't take the initiative to attack he generally does but waited patiently for Kurinai to make her move. Kuroto's unwavering posture gave Kurinai a great sense of oppression, which made her feel a little uncomfortable. Under the pressure of silent confrontation, Kurinai finally couldn't bear it after all. Megan, Jubaku Satsu, Demon Illusion, Tree Binding Death As soon as Kurinai made her move, she went with her best genjutsu technique, which is also one of the secret genjutsu techniques passed down to her from her father. As soon as, Kurinai cast the genjutsu, Kuroto suddenly fell into a trance, but then instantly returned to normal, as if nothing had happened. Kurinai was simply shocked, what? How is that even possible? From the chakra's response, Kurinai clearly felt that Kuroto had cracked her genjutsu. And this result shocked her. According to common sense, even if the enemy can break free of the genjutsu, still they need to use some kind of method to do so. This can be achieved by disrupting the flow of chakra, or self-mutilation to stimulate oneself. In short, a method is definitely necessary to break for genjutsu dissipation. But here Kuroto did nothing as such, but was still able to break free of her illusion, which kind of made her really confused. Kuroto also had some realization of the effect of genjutsu on him now. Undoubtedly the Tensigen like the Byakugan, Sharingan, and Rinnegan is highly resistant to the effect of Genjutsu. If it is an ordinary Genjutsu, he hardly needs to do anything actively, the Tensigen can passively remove the effects of Genjutsu on him. And the whole process only takes an instant. After realizing this, Kuroto decided to suppress the joy in his heart for now, as the battle was still not over, and said to Kurinai, I'll give you a piece of advice, if you meet with someone with some kind of dojutsu ability don't use genjutsu as the primary source of attack against them. Kurinai stared hard at Kuroto, 
Why did my Genjutsu attack have no effect on you? How did you break free of the effect of Genjutsu without using any Genjutsu dissipation method? Kurinai's loud questioning attracted the attention of many Chunin who had not yet participated in their respective battles. Being the center of focus, Kuroto thought, this is a good opportunity to establish the image of a strong person, so he said lightly, against a ninja with a strong pupil power, ordinary genjutsu are simply meaningless, as genjutsu technique is of yin chakra nature and the dojutsu kekai genkai increases the mental strength of a ninja, so the change of yin nature has less effect on them. This is why I said to you before, the reason for your bad luck is that your genjutsu techniques are not much effective against me. Although understanding the reason behind the failure, but Kurinai isn't the type of person to give up and concede defeat so easily. She snorted at Kuroto's words and immediately started printing hand seals. Tajera bore Tajura Horseyx. Genjutsu, Flower Petal Escape. Wish. As Kurinai cast the technique, signs of a slight breeze blowing through the ninth battle range appeared. This made Kurinai's lips curve, you have now been caught in a genjutsu technique. Not wasting the opportunity, she went with the flow of the breeze and swooped towards the still Kuroto. Even when Kurinai was approaching so fast Kuroto still stood motionlessly, it appeared as if was caught in an illusion and seemed to be unaware of his surroundings. But just as the audience thought that Kurinai has almost won, Kuroto raised his right arm and accurately sealed Kurinai's attack route. You! Shocked by the sudden response Kurinai couldn't help but mutter. Her attack was blocked at such a close range, this made her stunned on the spot. Kuroto didn't even bother to reply just turned his body and with a sharp momentum kicked Kurinai in the gut, making the dazed Kurinai fly away while coughing up some blood. It seems that you still don't understand what I explained a while ago, the passive resistance due to difference in mental strength due to pupil power of dojutsu renders your genjutsu techniques meaningless against me. Kuroto stated this fact plainly. Kurinai got up from the ground with a face full of unwillingness and asked a little desperately, why? The genjutsu she uses are all secret and unique techniques passed down to her from her father, and her proficiency in genjutsu is something she takes great pride in, but today that pride is shattered as a weak glass, in the face of plain facts. Not only Yuhi Kurinai, but even many other chunin who were watching their battle were also shocked, even Shursui who has already finished his battle with a one-sided victory was also quite surprised after taking notice of the battle. Kuroto knows that Kurinai also lost her father on the night of the Kyubi's rebellion. He didn't want to emotionally agitate her too much, but it is an unavoidable fact that unless it is a genjutsu like Koto Amitsukami or Tsukuyumi then they would be pretty ineffective against dojutsu type Kekai Genkai. Making Kurinai realize this point earlier in the timeline would be a good thing for her. Therefore, Kuroto said coldly, it's the hard truth, rather than realizing this in the face of an enemy let me tell you from beforehand, as for whether you want to accept it or not is entirely up to you. Listening to Kuroto's tone, Kurinai couldn't help but ask, can your Byakugan see through my genjutsu techniques? Kuroto just shrugged and wasn't interested in answering, then he remembered Kurinai was played by Itachi pretty badly, so he decided to kindly remind her, if you encounter an enemy who is truly proficient in genjutsu kills, don't fight him, her a pure genjutsu battle, especially if the enemy has a dojutsu kekai genkai, otherwise the consequences would be quite unpredictable. Although pretty upset, Kurinai nodded at Kuroto's words silently and decided to admit defeat. Although she is defeated in this battle, it wasn't without gain for her. On the contrary, this battle made her realize her weakness and understand what type of ninjas naturally restrain her. On the side, the Sandame Hokage watched this scene, while pondering over Kuroto's words, and then he ordered the Umbu ninja standing next to him, in the last round, arrange a contest between Hyuga Kuroto and Uchiha Shirsue. The Umbu in question was also paying close attention to the match just now so he nodded and said, yes, it shall be done, Hokage-sama. After this discussion, the next matches began, one by one, the contestants were being screened out. Unsurprisingly, Kuroto won all the next two rounds and therefore was qualified to enter the final round of assessment. By now only 30 chunin left in the venue. Among these 30 chunin ninjas, the only figures left of the same generation as Kuroto were Mike Guy, Saratobi Asuma, and the much younger Uchiha Shursue, as for the other classmates, they all got eliminated. Asuma had already anticipated Kuroto's and Shirsue's winning streak but he was surprised when Mike Guy, who was considered another of those Tale of the Crane students in their academy days also won three games in a row, and he praised Guy, Guy, it appears you've also made great progress. Guy was obviously very happy, he stood in his signature pose, showing his shining white teeth, and said with an energetic laugh, ha 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 ha, I am Kanoha's blue beast, obviously I am going to be strong. 
Seeing all the Chunin ninjas present looking at them with a weird expression because of being attracted by Guy's loud laughs, Asuma waved his hands in embarrassment, don't look at me like that, I don't know him, I really don't know him. At this time, Sandame Hokage-sama came over slowly while smoking from a tobacco pipe. All the Chunin present gave their salute to Hokage-sama. Sandim-sama smiled and said, all the people present here are some of the best Chunin in this village. As the Hokage, I can't express in words how proud I am of all of you. However, the number of spots available for the promotion to Tokubetsu Jonin is limited, and therefore, we still need to go through a final round of assessment. As Hokage-sama stated this everyone's faces were now solemn. Being selected up to this point definitely means that all the remaining 30 Chunin are outstanding in strength, it has hard to guarantee victory, therefore the final round of assessment will inevitably have some fierce confrontations. Ahem. After a slight cough, Sandem sama announced, let's start the final round of assessment. The matchups for the final rounds were also done by drawing lots, and the details for the match came out very quickly, in the first match of the final round the participant to duke out are, Hyuga Kuroto vs Uchiha Shursui. Seeing the result of the draw, Kuroto wasn't much surprised, obviously, he is smart enough to know just how fair the drawing process, manipulating the matchups is indispensable for the officers and is beyond what he can interfere with. It is also necessary for seniors to judge the candidates. Shirsue saw also stunned momentarily and then returned to a calm self. However, unlike the calm Kuroto and Shirsue, others present were obviously very interested in the results of this confrontation. As the two great dojitsu of the Kanoha village, which one of the Sharingan or the Byakugan is stronger or weaker, this topic has always been a topic of repeated discussion in the village. Therefore, the fight between Hyuga Kuroto and Uchiha Shursue definitely attracted everyone's interest. There was no need to think too much, Kuroto gently leaped and landed on the first battle range. On the other hand, Shursue walked in slowly. As soon as the two sides stood opposite to each other, Kuroto said, as I've mentioned before I am curious to see the strength of the most genius Uchiha of this generation, additionally I am also quite interested in facing the Sharingan, I hope you won't let me down. And as soon as the signal was given, the fight begins. If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later, bye bye.